Hey guys, I'm Dust with JP, and today we're going to talk about the silent capture spring. Now this system does replace your typical buffer spring that you're going to run in your AR. However, there's a couple things we need to look at, and that's really what this video is about. So if you're really interested in the SES and what might be compatible for your rifle or your setup or what you're looking for, we have... Um, couple of videos in our product focus series that you should go check out. We have uh, one on the AR-10 and 15, and then we have another one on the AR-9 specifically. So in this video, we're really gonna just talk about the installation into the, of the SES into the rifle. And we're also gonna talk about how to reconfigure our SES. One thing we need to make sure we pay attention to is gonna be the bolt carrier. Now, some bolt carriers have a weight in the back end here. We're gonna to have to remove that weight and we're also gonna to have to make sure that we measure the inside diameter. It needs to be 0 0.530 inches. The reason that is, is our SES actually slides on a rod that goes inside of the bolt carrier. Now it also has to travel three and three quarters inches in the carrier. So those are gonna be some measurements that we've gotta check first to ensure that this SES is gonna ride perfectly with our rifle and ride inside the bolt carrier. All right guys, so when we get started on our rifle here, there's a couple things we're gonna look at. And one of them is gonna be our buffer retaining pin here. It's just like this guy. Now we're gonna definitely wanna remove this guy. You can run it in there, however, it does make removing and installation of the SES a little bit harder. So we always recommend removing this guy and you could run your SES, because it is all captured, you could run it without a buffer retaining uh, pin. However, we did make a little buffer retaining pin just for the SES um, that works perfectly in here. It makes the insulation and removal of the SES a lot easier. So if you're gonna do any type of maintenance, oiling, checking your O-rings, anything like that, that guy definitely makes it a lot easier. Now, um, when you get an SES, it's gonna come with a little shim. If you're gonna run a carbon link buffer tube, the little shim might be exactly what you need. So the SCS fits in there and the shim would give it just enough preload. Uh, however, if you do run a rifle length buffer tube, this buffer does come in or this spacer does come with the SES and you're actually gonna slide that in first and it's gonna be at the end of that tube and then your SES will slide in just like this. Now we do sell another buffer for the guys that are running an A5 setup, this is sold separately, so you need to go check that out online if that's what you're running, but we do have that set up for you. All right guys, the installation of the SES is pretty simple. As you can tell, it'll just slide right in. However, I don't have a trigger in here, so that makes it a lot easier. However, if I did have a trigger, the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and decock the, uh, or cock the trigger down, and I'm gonna push the hammer all the way down so it falls in, and then the SES, just kind of comes in at an angle here and we'll slide right in and we're good to go. So when it comes to the fitment of the SES, we're gonna need to pull our, uh, our upper out of our pocket here. Throw our BCG in. Now, this is the tricky part, is when we start to actually put the lower down, we need to make sure that it, it, it compresses on the spring just ever so slightly. If it's not, then we know we don't have enough preload on the SES. If we go to push it in and we can't get it in at all, then we have too much preload. Now, there's an easy way to check that. So, Let's say we, you think we, you have too much preload. One thing you can do is you can take a quarter, it's about 30 thousandths of an inch, and you're actually gonna put it on the side here. And if the SES is sticking out just about the same width of a quarter, then you know you've got the perfect preload. However, in this instance, we don't have enough preload. So we'd actually take a shim, and we're gonna put the shim in the back of the, of the carbon buffer, or the buffer tube here, and then we'll put our SES back in. And then again, take your quarter, check your preload, and if it comes out to about 30 thousandths of an inch or the width of a quarter, then we know we're good to go. So we're gonna get into the maintenance of the SES, which is a huge part of making sure your rifle stays running. When it comes to the maintenance of the SES, we're gonna treat this just like we do the rest of our rifle. 
every time we go clean our rifle, it's smart to pull the SES out and go through the whole thing. So first thing I'm gonna look at when I pull the SES out is I'm gonna look at the O-rings and make sure those guys look good. So if you see, when we're looking at them, if you see them a little frayed or cracking, it's time to replace those O-rings. Also, another thing to look at when we are cleaning an SES, um, we never wanna use solvent. Actually, what we wanna do is we're gonna pull the SES out, we're gonna put it in some hot, soapy water, kind of scrub it down a little bit, and then we're gonna use compressed air to dry it off, or we can use our wife's hair dryer, just not on heat, and we can uh, dry it off that way. Once it's dried, we're gonna come back over with a light uh, film of oil. We're gonna put it on the guide rod and the springs. We're gonna put a little bit on the weights, and we're gonna kind of spin it around 360 degrees, make sure we get the whole thing set up there. Now, another critical wear point on the SES is gonna be the bumper. So this AR-10 bumper, it's flat, but if you start to see that it gets, starts to get any grooves in there or starting to fray, we're definitely gonna to wanna to replace that as well. And this is gonna be one that you see on an AR-15 or an AR-9. Um, like I said, if they, you start to see any kind of, uh, anything deforming, let's go ahead and replace that. Now, another thing to look at when I have the SES out is I wanna check the screws on here and make sure they stay tight. Now, if I put a torch head in here and I turn it and it's loose, I'm actually gonna to wanna to pull that all the way out, get some degreaser, clean out the threads, clean the threads on the uh, torch head, and then we're gonna reapply that. Now, depending on if we're talking about the top or the bottom screw or the top screw, we're gonna use a different type of thread locker. So bottom screw is going to be 263. It's more of a permanent thread locker, it works great. And then the top screw is going to be 243, which will allow you to lock it down, but if you ever need to take it off, we'll be able to apply a little heat, break it loose and pull that off. And we'll actually show you how to do that here in a minute. Besides maintenance, there's a couple other reasons why I'd want to take my SES out and take it apart. The first one's going to be if I want to change the perceived recoil or the felt recoil of my rifle. And I'm going to go in there and change that by changing out the masses. So we have a steel mass here and we also have a, tight, or a tungsten mass. They weigh different. Some of them are all tungsten. Some of them are all steel. Some of them are mixed. It's really going to depend on what you bought and what you want your rifle to do. Now, if you really want to get crazy, we're going to look at the cyclic rate. And we have spring packs that will work for all three platforms. So AR-15, AR-10, AR-9. And you can go in there and change out the springs and really change that cyclic rate to, you know, if you want to run faster or, or slower, depending on your, your shooting style, those are, that's going to be a great way to go there. Now, the cool thing, in my opinion, the really cool thing about this is I can actually take an SES out of my AR-15 and I can put it in an AR-10 by changing my bumpers. So we've got a, uh, this bumper would typically be on your AR-15 and this would be on your AR-10. So there's just a couple of cool things about the SES that I absolutely love it. You know, it's probably my favorite part that we have here at JP just for the simple fact that it's like the mini Legos for grown-ups, and I can really customize the way my rifle feels. All right, now that we've talked about all the components that can be changed out, let's go ahead and take this SES for an AR-10 and convert it over to an SES that will fit an AR-15. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a punch, and I, this is a 1 8 inch punch here, and we're gonna slide that into these little holes, and we're gonna lock the SES down. So as you can see, we're just gonna take the, the SES, push it down, put the pin in, lock it in. Then we're gonna take our torch driver and just break it loose. Now, sometimes you may need a little heat. And so we'll just take a little heat and we're gonna put it on the aluminum here, just enough to get the blue Loctite to break loose so we can break this down. All right, now when we pull the pin out here, we gotta make sure we hang on to the slider. We don't want this thing to go flying all over our house or into the ceiling. And we'll just slowly release the pressure. We're gonna take our slider off. We'll take our spring off. And we're gonna remove our buffer or our bumper. 
and we're gonna replace it with an AR-15 bumper. We can grab a new spring here. We'll go ahead and put that in there. Then we're gonna set this off to the side and we're gonna get into a part, it takes a little bit longer than doing that. And that's because we got a little snap ring here on the end. So we're gonna get that snap ring off and then we're gonna slide off the weight. So I just take a little uh, flathead driver bit here and get underneath a little lip there is and I'm just gonna try to pry it up and off to the side here. And once I do that, I will be able to walk this thing off. So we've got it started. And then I'll just kind of run my finger around like this, 360 degrees, and slowly just kind of walk it out of that lip until I get my little snap ring here. Put that off to the side. And then we're gonna pull our steel weight off and we can grab a tungsten weight. Now, if you've already gone this far into it, it's not gonna hurt to go ahead and replace the o-rings and i'm not saying this is how you have to replace o-rings there's definitely an easier way to uh, replace o-rings and i'll show you how to do that once i get this put back together but if you're already this far into it you might as well just replace your o-rings so i'm just going to take this tungsten scs or tungsten weight put it on there grab my snap ring get a little groove in there and we're just going to do the reverse that we did take it off we're just going to kind of get it in that lip and then slowly walk it on. And there we go. All right. So then we're going to go ahead and uh, get this slider back on there. We're going to use our pin and lock this down. So that's how that should look there. Then we're gonna take our 243 Loctite. We're gonna put a little bit into the threads here. Get that started by hand. Get our tool on there and then we'll just tighten it up. Now a little trick when I'm taking this part or putting it back together, I can use the pin that's in here as kind of a holding point and help me secure it a little better. So I can hold it here at the end and then just tighten it down. Or if I was gonna break it loose, I just flip it over and do the exact same thing here. As I mentioned earlier, there is an easier way to change out the O-rings on this SES. Now, I will just take this o-ring in here and I'm just going to snap it, throw it in the trash and I will take all of them off and then I'm going to push my weights against each other all the way to the front on the slider so they'll actually be connected like this. Then I'm going to take an o-ring and I'm just going to slide it over the top like this. And then I will just, you know, depending on what slot it needs to be in, I'm going to walk it down, drop it in there and we should be good to go. We've now taken our AR-10 SES, converted it over to an AR-15 SES. We're gonna drop it in there. We're gonna go ahead and get a trigger installed in this guy, and then we're gonna go out to the range and have a good time. Hope to see you guys at the range. And also, if you have any questions, comments, please you know, leave a question down below in the comment section. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms, and we'll see you guys at the range.